progressive therapy right to the very last day of their life. I want to switch gears for a moment. You wrote a remarkable piece about the effects of solitary confinement uh, on prisoners, on, uh, on people who have been held in isolation for a long time. On this issue, I just want to turn to the case of the four prisoners in a supermax prison, the Ohio State Penitentiary. This week, they launched a hunger strike to protest what they call their harsh mistreatment under solitary confinement. The prisoners, Bomani Shakur, Siddiq Abdullah Hassan, Jason Robb and Namir Abdul Mateen were sentenced to death for their involvement in the 1993 prison uprising in Lucasville, Ohio. For over 17 years, they've been held in 23 hours a day solitary lockdown. On Monday, the four began refusing to eat meals until they are moved out of solitary confinement and onto death row, where they say they'll get better treatment. Yesterday, I spoke, uh, Amy spoke with the longtime peace activist, historian, and lawyer Stoughton Lind. He wrote the definitive history of the 1993 Ohio prison uprising at Lucasville. He described uh, the prisoners' conditions. Let's take a listen. They are held in more restrictive confinement than the more than 100 other death sentence prisoners in the same prison. Now, why is this? It's precisely because the system thinks of them as leaders. So it will let them watch television. They even let Bomani Shakur use a typewriter. But what they don't let any of the four men do is to be in the same space as another human being other than a guard at the same time. And this means that while other death sentence prisoners can wander about the pod, can have collected meals outside their cells, and especially can have semi-contact visits with their friends and families, the four are always obliged to encounter the world either through a solid cell door or when they go out on a visit through a solid pane of glass. So that, again, Balmani has uh, a niece and nephew aged eight and three that he loves and would wish to touch. If he were on death row, he could do that. But he's been told by the prison authorities he will never be on death row because they're going to keep him in social isolation until they kill him. So that is uh, Stoughton Lynn, a longtime uh, peace activist lawyer, talking about these four men who have now gone on a hunger strike at the Ohio State Penitentiary, demanding to be put on death row where they say that they will be treated better. And then we've got the case of the alleged WikiLeaks Army whistleblower, Bradley Manning, who's being held in solitary confinement. 22 years old, U.S. Army private, arrested in May, has been in detention ever since. For the past, past five months, he's been held at the U.S. Marine Brig at Quantico, Virginia. Before that, held for two months in a military jail in Kuwait. Last month, we spoke to Glenn Greenwald, the political and legal blogger at Salon.com. Glenn reported that Manning's being held under conditions that constitute cruel and inhumane treatment and even torture. This is what Glenn Greenwald He's said. He's been held for seven months uh, without being uh, 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 convicted of any crime. Um, and the conditions that I recently discovered he's being held in are really quite disturbing. Um, and this has been true for the entire seven-month duration of his detention. He is in solitary confinement, um, and he's not only in solitary confinement, which means that he's in a cell alone, but he's there for 23 out of 24 hours every day. He's released for one hour a day only. So 23 out of the 24 hours a day, he sits alone. Um, he is barred from even doing things like exercising inside of his cell. He's constantly supervised and monitored. And if he does that, um, he's told immediately to stop. There are very strict rules about what he's even allowed to do inside the cell. Uh, beyond that, he's being denied just the most basic uh, attributes of civilized imprisonment, such as a pillow and sheets, and has been denied that without explanation for the entire duration um, of his visit as well. And there is a lot of literature and a lot of psychological studies and even studies done by the U.S. military that show that prolonged solitary confinement, which is something that the United States does almost more than any other country in the Western world, um, of the type to which Manning is subjected, 
can have very long-term psychological damage, including driving people to insanity and the like. Um, it clearly is cruel and unusual. Um, it's arguably uh, a form of torture. And given that Manning has never been convicted of anything, unlike the convicts at Supermaxes to whom this treatment is normally applied, it's particularly egregious. That's Glenn Greenwald, the p political and legal blogger at Salon.com. In his piece that he wrote about Manning, he actually cited your article, Hellhole, which you document what happens to people held in isolation. Explain why this is uh, thought of as a form of torture in many places. Well, I was interested in whether it really was torture, and I was interested because this has become, I think, a generationally defining question for us. Um, in the 1980s, during the Reagan administration, solitary confinement was very unusual. Today, we have over 50,000 people in long-term solitary confinement in our American prisons now. Um, you know, in states like New York, um, it's, it, it's across every red and blue states. We have uh, New York has over 8 percent of its prison population in long-term solitary confinement. Um, uh, the, uh, a large proportion, some think a majority, uh, are not there for violent offenses either. Um, it's a method of control that we regard as increasingly routine. And so what I, my puzzle was, is it torture or is it not? And what I looked back to was the experience uh, and the literature, which is much richer, around what um, hostages and, uh, and prisoners of war, uh, our Vietnam veterans, for example, experienced when they went through solitary confinement. Um, and, uh, and what's found is that people experience solitary confinement as even more damaging than physical torture. Uh, Vietnam veterans who received physical torture, John McCain had two and a half years in solitary confinement, uh, had his legs and arm broken uh, during his imprisonment, but described the two and a half years that he spent in solitary as being the most um, uh, cruel component and, and, and the most terrifying aspect of what he went under. You also look at studies that show that people held in isolation from other human beings we actually need social, friendly interaction with other people to be sane, um, to be right, you absolutely. Document how people actually reach a level of psychosis. That's right. They Not everybody. Lose their minds, right? Not everybody. The the people who become psychotic in in solitary confinement are people who um, often have uh, attention deficit disorder or uh, low um, uh, IQ or um, uh, issues of prior mental illness. Well, guess who is in our prisons? And there's a very high rate of psychosis and people flat out going crazy under the confinement conditions. And so then what I puzzle over is, um, does it actually reduce our violence in our prisons? There's, uh, the evidence from multiple studies now um, is that it not only that, that it has not reduced violence, it's increased the cost of, of being in prison. And, um, and my finding was that we have decided that when it is political, uh, when, it, when it is a uh, prisoner of war or a hostage, that it is absolutely torture when other countries do this to people, and that there is no discernible difference in the experience of what people go through um, in, our, uh, in our prisons when they're uh, in solitary confinement for 14 years, in the case of one person who I, I documented, uh, that this is torture. Dr. Togawa.